Hello, I'm Troy Wolf with RideForm.net, and the purpose of this video is to provide a short tutorial on Curvature. Curvature is one of the many browser based mapping tools to help you create routes and tracks. Uh, and Curvature is specifically aimed at motorcycle riders that are more interested usually in the, the curvy bits and getting off the, the main interstates and such. So, I want to show how to use it. I'm pretty new to it myself, so I'm not an expert. Um, but, you know, I know a lot of people in the past, you know, use Basecamp um, from Garmin, especially if you have a Garmin unit, that's kind of what you're trained to do. And it's a great tool, does a lot of features, um, great for organizing your information. But, you know, a lot of people are left a little less than satisfied with the actual route building experience in that, in that map system. Uh, you know, especially when compared to Google Maps and how nice it is to be able to switch to the satellite view if you want to see things or the street view. Um, so Curvature kind of gets a little closer to that. It is important to note that it's based on OpenStreetMap. OpenStreetMap, it's not Google Maps, so it's uh, actually uh, open source maps that are created by people like you and me. Anybody can go in and use their tools to um, make road data, uh, make POI data, uh, fix problems. So, um, you know, on one hand, it's, it's, it's amazing and it's, it's a worldwide effort and it's very accurate and, and complete in some places. And then other parts of the world, um, you know, there's a lot of mistakes or missing information. So you kind of got to use it at your own risk there. But, you know, generally in the United States, it's pretty good. Uh, but, you know, you will run into issues from time to time when it thinks there's a road where there isn't one or things like that. So in Curvature, there is quite a few options. Um, I want to show you in the upper right hand corner here. These are the different maps that are available. So uh, I think it actually defaults to Esri Streets normally. Um, I tend to like the OpenStreetMap, but I'm still pretty new to it, and so maybe I'll figure out uh, and change my mind there. The satellite, though, is something I use quite a bit, and I'll show you an example of that in this quick tutorial. So I say quick, hopefully it is quick. So um, let's say, so I'm here in Kansas City. I live in the, the Overland Park area, so it's, I've got it centered on, on where I'm at. Um, let's say I want to go to Arkansas, and I'm going to stay at the Mulberry Mountain Lodge, which is a beautiful place with cabins uh, along the Pigtail Trail, Highway 23, great uh, great place for motorcycle riding. And let's say I want to make a day loop that's going to take me, um, and, and I'm talking about a dual sport motorcycle loop or an adventure motorcycle loop where we're going to hit gravel roads and pavement um, and, and really enjoy the journey. So uh, place we're going to go is the OARC General Store, very popular stop for motorcycle riders and outdoorsmen in general. Uh, been there for you know long long time burgers pie got a little bit of gas so good place to stop so what we're going to do here is in curvature i'm going to type in oarc to kind of get me to the general area and it finds arkansas so i'm going to click on that and so one of the things you'll notice here is this little icon here with the blue arrows and the dot and over here on the left it's actually one of the things you can toggle on and off on the map so i told you curvature is aimed at motorcycle riders so this is actually biker cafes and meeting places. Now again, these are sourced from uh, just you know people, they're community sourced. So if you know of a particular place that is you know great for motorcycle riders to hang out or stop and get coffee or whatever, you can add this data for everybody to see. And so I do encourage you to check out open street maps and just learn about how to be a contributor and how to use their tools and I'm, I'm new to this myself so um, as I learn some things you know maybe I'll make some more tutorial videos about how to do that how to correct things when you find mistakes or to add uh, missing items so there's where we want to go but what I'm gonna do is go find the Mulberry Mountain Lodge now I happen to know it's here along Highway 23 about two and a half miles up from this junction and as I zoom in, you know, it's kind of hard to see exactly where it is, but if I use the satellite view, it's a pretty big clearing that's right off of the highway here. So I happen to know that this is it. And as I zoom in, I can see there's their office and they've got a campground uh, down here that's a really nice campground if you want to do that. Got RV spots and everything. They've got a big stage here and they do some really large music festivals here at the Mulberry Mountain. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click right here and I'm going to set this as my start and I'm also going to right click here and set as my end. You know, I'll have a really small track here. Switch back to the OpenStreetMaps and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back over to the OART Cafe and I'm simply going to right click there and set that as an intermediate point on my route. So now you can see Curvature has created a track for me that starts and ends here. And of course it's going to take me out and back the same way because that's kind of the most uh, accurate way or easiest way to get here and there. Now 
Curvature has these different modes, and I'm going to tell you on this short of a track with as few options, you don't get a lot of different variations here. Uh, but I'm going to leave it on the, the extra curvy. It's uh, interesting, so it is going to take me on a little bit different way here. So I'm going to leave that. Now, what I really want to do is I know that this is a pavement road along the Mulberry River on Highway 215, really beautiful. But I want to take a longer gravel route to get out there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in here and I'm going to drag this ending point up just to give me a little bit of a, something I can grab onto here. Now, what I'm going to do is click on this and when you do that, you get another intermediate point. I know I want to come up here to this Fly Gap Mountain Road and I'm going to grab that intermediate point and I'm going to just take it over here on this road. Now, what I'm trying to do is get a whole loop going here. And I know I want to hit this road and probably come down here. So what I need to do, I can drag this, but all it's going to do, so I'll show you what happens if I drag that, like say, to here. That's not going to get me what I want either. But what you can do is start clicking and just getting more points in there and just dragging those and clicking again. And actually, let me back up here. Let me click this and delete this point. So it actually works better if I work kind of from here. So let me click here and just keep dragging these and just keep adding points. So I'm getting a little closer. Let me, let me click another point here. I'm going to take and put it Try to put it right here and see how far that goes for me. So let me take it back here. Didn't quite get where I want. Let me do this. All right, getting a little closer. Okay. All right, now that's looking a little better. But I still need to get this over here. Maybe one more or two more points will do it. So one more probably. Get it right over here. Nope, not quite. And one more point in here. Ooh. That'd be a little tricky on me. All right, so I had one more. Get over here. All right. So now we've got a full loop. And I can go ahead and move my ending point a little closer to where I'm actually going to end now. So now I've got a full loop. So and, and Curvager will tell me that this is a 55, almost a 56 mile loop and I can do it in 2 hours and 12 minutes. I'm going to tell you on these gravel roads you're going to go a lot slower than that so it's going to be longer. Uh, so a couple things here. One thing is this route is starting at the Mulberry Mountain Lodge and going counterclockwise and I actually want to go the other way. So a couple things I can do here, if you click on the advanced options, some things to show you here, and you should just check out these options. Oh, one thing, you'll probably want to turn on miles, feet. Uh, this tool is a Europe tool, European-based tool, so most things are in kilometers. So a uh, couple options here. So you can place waypoints on streets. You know, if you look, were to zoom in on my points, I was pretty sloppy with them. They're not actually on the road. It doesn't really matter, but this, I'm going to click it. This will actually kind of correct your points and get them right on the road. Then the other thing I want to do is I want to I want to reverse this route. So if I do that, I don't know if you notice, but the points change their order. So now it goes one through ten this way. So this will take me off, you know, in the morning going this longer gravel road adventure route to the OR Cafe, and then from there I can come back home. Now we can save this now. In fact, let me go ahead and show you how to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and collapse the advanced options. So the way you save this as a GPX that you can load onto your, your Garmin device or your GPS unit, or what I'm doing now is onto my Android phone using the Osmand app. So what you do now is you want to export. So over here on the left, click export. And then I can name this and I'll call this, um, we'll call this the Mulberry to OARC route. And you want to call it a GPX, or you want it to be a GPX. And I like tracks, not routes. And I like uh, one of my waypoints. And I, I like to click a lot here, a lot of additional waypoints. Actually, I haven't played with this much to know what kind of a difference this makes. But what I'm assuming is by putting a lot in there, maybe I have a better chance of uh, having accuracy. But I, I need to play with that and see what that really is. But so far, that's been working well for me. 
And then this might be a little confusing. You might think you need to click generate here, but that's actually not what you need to do. To download this GPX file, you click in the bottom right here, export. And then if you'll notice here at the bottom of my browser in the lower left corner, there's Mulberry to OARC. So I've got that GPX file on my computer now in the normal location that your browser downloads. Normally that's in a folder called downloads, but you may have changed that on your computer. I want to show you another option here. So it's kind of nice to break these kinds of loops into two tracks so that you have a definite endpoint. You know, I probably wouldn't miss the OR Cafe if I were writing this, but you know, you wouldn't if if there was a point to go to the OR Cafe, you wouldn't want to ride right by it. So by having a track that goes there and ends, and then having another track home, that can that can definitely solve that problem. So Curvature has a pretty cool feature here where if you click on this point here you can click Route 1 or Route 2. So I'm going to click Route 1 to start with. And you can almost miss this, but what it did was opened up a new tab. So if you'll notice, I have two Curvature tabs open. This first one is still my entire track. And this new tab is just the first part of that. So now what I can do is I don't need to touch this at all. I can just go ahead and export this. And I could call this, you know, we'll call it Track 1 for now. Track 1 track, waypoints, I don't need the route. Some people like those, you might want to export that. So now I've got track one. And then I can come back here and I can just click route two. And again, you'll see a new tab open. And now I've got the return home part of that track. And likewise, I can export that. Call it you know, track two. And you'll want to play with these options for what you prefer experience and just playing with it. You'll figure that out. So anyway, now I've got that track. So that's how you use Curvager. Um, there are, there's a lot more to it. Um, oh, I forgot to show you this. I tend to collapse this left panel so then you've got more map to work with. So that's a pretty nice, nice feature. Um, sometimes, uh, you know, if I want to so, oh, here's something. So I see here on the route home, actually I forgot this. So it's routing me up here and I actually didn't want to do that. Uh, but it is interesting. If you look at the satellite here, you can see there's some pretty remote roads in here. And, you know, maybe maybe that's not what I wanted to do on my, my drive home. Um, so in fact, I actually have been here before. I think this road here is more of an ATV trail as I recall. Um, so that might be not what we want to do. So probably I would have wanted to have corrected that. And I just, I didn't catch it. I forgot to catch that when we we're doing this, but it's easy to correct that. Simply click, drop it down here and say, that's where you want to go instead. And I'll put this back on the open street map. So anyway, that's how you can move bits of your track that maybe weren't where you wanted to go. So that's, uh, that's all I've got for this video. Hope that's helpful for some people. Enjoy.